The Passion of Jesus Christ According to St. Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests. What will you give me if I betray him? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus. Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them and prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They became greatly distressed and began to ask him. Surely not I, the Lord. The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written. But woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Surely not I, Rabbi. You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples. Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them. Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You all become deserters of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I'm raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Though all be well, though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Truly, I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will never deny you. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. Going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. So you could not stay awake with me one hour. Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away for the second time. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them, he went and prayed for a third time. Then he came back to the disciples. Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of the sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign. The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Friend, do what you are here to do. And they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do not think I can, do you not think I can appeal to my father, and he will at once send more than 12 legions of angels. 
But now then would, would scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must happen this way. Have you come out with the sword and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophet may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. Peter followed at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards to see how this would end. The chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward. This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? Jesus was silent. I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, but I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Tearing his clothes. He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy? What is your verdict? Yelling, the crowd said, kill him. They spat at him and slapped him in the face. Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is that struck you? Meanwhile, Peter was sitting in the courtyard. A servant girl saw him. You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. I don't know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him. This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. I tell you, I don't know him. After a little while, a bystander came up. Certainly you are one of them, for your accent betrays you. I don't know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed, and Peter remembered. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he went and hanged himself. It is not lawful to put this into the treasury since it is blood money. After conferring together, they used it to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Thus was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the price set on a man's head according to Israelite tradition, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Jesus stood before the governor, Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. The chief priests and elders accused him, but he did not answer. Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. Whom do you want me to release to you? 
Jesus Barabbas? Or do you want Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him word. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. Which of the two do you want me to release for you? The crowd yelled, Barabbas. Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? The crowd yelled, crucify him. Why? What evil has he done? The crowd yelled again, crucify him. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood. This is your doing. Let his blood be on us and on our children. Pilate re released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crowd, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his hand and knelt before him. They all said, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on his head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. They led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. They sat down and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads. You who would destroy the temple and build it up in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from that cross. The chief priests, scribes, and elders also mocked him. He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. About three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders heard it. This man is calling for Elijah. One of them ran and got a sponge filled with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. Let us wait and see whether Elijah will come and save him. Then Jesus cried with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks were split. Tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified. Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. 
They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate. Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and then tell the people he has been raised from the dead and the last deception will be worse than the first. You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. They went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone.